Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today on Dynamo Bim. On this episode, we're going to be talking about key schedules and key values. One really wonderful way of making mass changes in your Revit model. Per usual, we have the Revit sample model open today. It's actually already a door schedule with a key built in, specifically for the hardware. And you can see here that there is a separate hardware schedule with those keys. So you can see here that there's quite a few parameters associated to this hardware key, such as hinge set, lock function, etc. One really great way of visualizing this is that if I actually add some of those parameters, such as hinge set, to this schedule here for my door schedule, and you can see as I associate a key it automatically associates, associates that hinge set as well as any other parameters that are associated to that key. Now, if I want to make a change to that key value, you can see here that it's locked out. I can't make changes to it. I can make changes to something without a key. So I can either make that unique by switching it back to none, or I can either, within the key schedule, create a new data row for a unique key, or simply change that hinge set associated to the key. And you can see now that anywhere associated to that one key value has updated with its hinge set. We do that again here. Switch it from a pivot spring to a three butt. And you can see here, if I go back to my door schedule, and now all of those have a three butt. So once again, key schedule is a wonderful way for me to make mass changes to many parameters to a single or multiple elements and lock those parameters down. So have a room finish schedule with a whole bunch of finishes here, the base, floor, wall, and ceiling finishes, but no key schedule yet. So to do that, I'm going to go up to view schedules, just like I would create a schedule of building components. But when I select the category of rooms, you can see that it allows me to select a schedule of keys. By default, it's going to call it a room style schedule. I'm fine with that. And I'm going to go ahead and add those finish parameters. So base, ceiling, floor, and wall. Hit OK, and now I'm able to insert a data row. Now that I have all of these finishes associated to my key value of back of house, when I come into my room finish schedule and I start to associate this to my stair, for example, I'm first going to need to add that room style schedule into my schedule. And once again, I added that in order to the C by clicking first where I wanted to add it. And now when I come in, I add that back of house room style key, you can see all of those parameters come with it, right? So same thing, maybe if I come in here and give it to my electrical room, back of house. I can also start to maybe give different keys, such as bathrooms, toilet. I can start to associate the keys as well. Now, once again, this does start to lock the values down. Anywhere I've associated those, maybe I want to start to do my computer lab to have classroom, instruction to have classroom, right? I'm making so many changes to my finishes based off of those room styles, right? If I want to make a change, maybe my classroom has a different ceiling finish, right? Maybe it has an ACT as well for sound, and we'll go with a wall covering of sorts for resistance. I go back to my, my room finish schedule, you can see any of those changes have now been applied or that room finish is applied. 
Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hopefully you can apply key schedules to all of your categories within Revit, making updates super easy. Make sure you subscribe to get notifications about future episodes on Datamobim.